So when I put out videos about characters that I don't normally play, I have to go through a few phases. The first comes when I suck and people are mean to me. The second comes when I recognize an extra tiny layer to the killer and I can successfully face camp someone. And the third is when I realize, yep, this is a killer behavior with design. The first and second phases never came with Bubba. It was just fuck you at all spaces and at all times. In my opinion, he's no longer the worst killer in the game. I know most of you believed that I modeled that tier list after the fucking cast system, but I genuinely believe he'd go up a few tiers now. At the risk of losing the few that don't know what I'm talking about, Leatherface, aka the Cannibal, recently went through a bit of a beautification process wherein which they took this little piece of charcoal and polished and polished and polished until there were three pieces of charcoal. Also, he's a licensed killer. I'm sure most of you knew that, but I subscribe to the No Child Left Behind school of thought. Leatherface's power allows him to rev up a chainsaw and run with it. Don't roll your fucking eyes at me, that's my job. While running with this chainsaw, he's capable of instantly knocking down everyone that walks within the no-no square. And if we were like, a month in the past, that would be it. You rev up and you go. Thankfully, someone smacked the developers in the back of the head and said you can't just sell a character with a lame power and try to make up for it with some of the best perks in the game. That's just shitty behavior. Then they might tearfully reply, well it's okay when he rushes things. No! That's why they gave him a total rehaul. Fixed his add-ons and then gave him some actual depth, which honestly should have been there from the beginning, though before we die into the current state of this killer, I want to talk about some lost bits of history. For those who don't remember, back when I was in fucking community college, there was a challenge posed by the developers in exchange for a special prize. If killers hooked survivors and survivors escaped the grasps of killers a combined total of 12 million times, something new was to be added as a reward. Unsurprisingly, and possibly to the better faith of mankind, this metric wasn't met. So the devs were now stuck with this reward that likely cost them a lot of money and time on the phone, so they decided to get back in touch. Hey, uh, unrelated to that ward you totally fucking missed out on, but we're adding Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre and we're adding him right now. They're unrelated, we promise. Oh, by the way, here's a mask you didn't ask for. It'll be late. So how better to make up for that than with a power where you simply have to take code you already have and toss it in the washing machine? The next question you might ask is, why would you do that for a version of the hillbilly with half the cores light required to play him? Well, perks for one, we'll dig into that later, but I figured I'd out my somewhat low opinion behind Bubba's introduction and the intentions he was released with. Bubba of the before years was simply one chainsaw dash forwards, and if you touched any walls, you would be penalized with an incredibly long and frustrating stun time. He had a wide reach, so you could technically get an extra person with your saw, and before you adventurers of the future come across this video, let me answer this question for you. Yes, you could face camp the hell out of people with this. When you played against Bubba in the end game, he might as well have had Rancor, because you aren't getting off that fucking hook unless he finds mercy in his heart. That's all I have to say about how he actually played, and do you want to know how many words that took me to describe? 103. I just found that out. So let's fast forward to me now, in a quarantine, suffering. New Bubba is out, and my power has gone with it. Thanks, Weatherman. New Bubba gets three charges that he can chain together. These function like, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but nurse blinks. You have a lengthy wind-up when you can start revving the saw, but you have no downtime if you choose to connect these by pushing the power button. There's a window between starting the dash and using a token to start another, meaning that you have to time your dash with the meter remaining so that you can get the most amount of dash for your token. I think they call it the car dealership approach the game design. The more tokens you use, the more you'll have to deal with certain penalties. These tokens recharge passively, but the further down the meter, the longer the recharge. On the other side, this comes with a few advantages. It means you can easily catch up a loop when you find yourself in that situation. So, 99% of the time. So, in the end, I guess you could say this buff was a palette cleanser? It's been fairly effective at the moment, but there is, and always will be, a way to counter things that vaguely bother people in video games. The trick here is that you cannot touch anything that isn't a survivor or you enter tantrum mode. Tantrum mode forces you to move four times slower, and you can't do anything except fling the saw around wildly. Not only does this feel like shit, but you are guaranteed to lose anyone you were trying to catch. Don't fool yourself either. Unless they're eating a meatball hero and playing Dead by Daylight at the same time, they will not be close enough to be caught, and if you chase them, you better be content to sit in front of their hook for the rest of the game, which will probably be two seconds from that point. Here, let me emote for a second. I hate sewing. I literally could not stand it as a kid. I took a class in middle school about home life, and one of our assignments was to sew a piece of cloth, and I fucking cried. You have to get the needle into this super small dotted line, and if it's even a hair off, you have to try again. I have small hands and an attention deficit, so it spiraled into what a 12-year-old could call his step two. Why did I bring up that seemingly random point in my life? Because survivors like to thread you around trees in the hopes you'll bump into it. So imagine the razor-tight clench I get when I have to do the loop-de-loop -loop around something the size of a thumb, and the sharp pain in my brain when I touch one of the 
the fucking branches. That's right, I am calling out Mrs. S for my ineptitude in a video game. But it's not enough there. With the rework of his power, his add-ons were also super overhauled. In fact, I actually like the general vibe they give off, mostly because they reduce that fucking tantrum duration. The yellow ones are your traditional affair. Do this because number, or hate this less because number. But when you hit the green add-ons, each one seems to be impactful in some way. Like making survivors hit with your chainsaw, drop their items, and have their auras hidden while they're on the ground. You can even see them while revving up the chainsaw. And for once, they didn't decide that was worthy of a red add-on. Thank fucking god. Hell, you can even add extra charges to the saw at the cost of some numbers. All of this is good stuff in my mind, dynamic, impactful, and most importantly, fun to use. Speaking of which, the red add-ons do some of the weirdest shit, and god damn it, rather Yeah, okay, because where I live is currently enjoying a power outage, I never got to try these add-ons, but I can explain them nonetheless, and if me not having experienced that is a deal breaker for you, I assume you haven't been around here very long. The iridescent flesh consumes all three of Bubba's tokens for a really long dash, and the other red add-on replenishes your charges every time you hit someone. Now, my first hunch is that this is the add-on equivalent of that one couple that never leaves the other side and bones in front of your locker, but my guess is that one of them is incredibly toxic and just dragging the other down. In my humbly untested opinion, once you hit someone with the chainsaw, you really don't need to use it again. Sure, that'd be nice, but a lot of things would be nice and we're not starting here. Time to move on to what kind of builds you should be trying on Leatherface. Running roundabout builds is actually a bit more effective because your Bubba and therefore survivors believe your brain is full of the, let's say, finer things in life. I think the appropriate build for Bubba can be summed up as barbecue enduring spirit fury and save the best for last. Though expectation is the seedbed of horror and it's something I think anyone playing this game should be using to their advantage. If not for the sake of winning, then at least for the sake of being the coolest person to beat that survivor's ass. If they see some deranged invalid running dark devotion of all things, they might fucking recoil in disbelief. In fact, I generally enjoy running the stealth perks here. The best position for you to be is directly behind someone in an open space. For most killers, that might mean a free hit, but here you can down someone before they have time to reach any options. Dark Devotion has always been a favorite of mine for the sheer fact that it's almost always available. If you catch the obsession, you get what you want. Though it's not always perfect, this perk is somewhat dependent on the other person. Then you only have 30 seconds, and that's not as much time as you think it is. You might have time to check three generators max with this. I know I just shat on my own recommendation, but trust me that you might be able to get somewhere with this. If the negatives of Dark Devotion are too much for you, go with something like Tinkerer or Trail of Torment. People often ask why I run Cruel Limits on Bubba, and I have to explain that it's not a very serious piece of the build. I think Bubba thrives when people are stuck in enclosed spaces with him, so I tried to use this on Haddonfield to block all of the windows in the house, so that the only way out of the building was the way they entered. It was intended to trap them, and I was having so much fun with this that I forgot to take it off until it was just a part of my life. Finally, I have the combo of Barbecue and Chili, then Iron Maiden. This is one of the only killers that I think can genuinely use their reputation in their favor here. Most high-ranked survivors just sort of expect barbecue to be in the mix. Iron Maiden works to counterbalance this. For those who don't know, every time you hook someone with barbecue, it reveals everyone on the map as long as they aren't that close to you. The only way to hide from this is by getting in a locker, and oh my fucking god, finally someone found a use for these goddamn things. When anyone exits a locker, Iron Maiden triggers and they scream. This scream is also followed by the survivors being vulnerable for 10 seconds. One of the ways to dodge the chainsaw charge is by jumping inside of a locker and waiting it out. This doesn't work even without a mediocre legion perk, and you're a fucking idiot if you try it, but people still do it. Then again, they did fuck up the auras again, so maybe wait until you could see something more than a passing piece of ketchup on the screen to go messing around with this. Though, at the end of the day, all I do is stare at the locker trying to prove to them that I have it. Talking about Barbecue might as well transition into his perks. Barbecue and Chili will grant you the ability to see every other survivor when you hook someone as long as they aren't 48 meters away. I know that's redundant, but get over it. Every time you hook someone new, you get a token, meaning that you can get four of these at max. For each token, you get a 25% bonus to the blood point intake at the end of the match. This is one of the best perks in the game, and I really don't get why. There are several perks that give you the map information you're after, but barbecue is one of the only ones that can double your cash intake at the end of the match. But I think it's worth nerfing because anything that is used by 90% of the player base should be looked at. I think it'd be better if it was simply blood point oriented, that way you aren't tacking on an eh bonus alongside a really cool quality of life upgrade. 
Granted, if they change this, they might have to give distortion a real fucking use, because without barbecue, there would be literally no reason to use it. Jeff already takes up the same percent of the player base that exists for Democrats in upscale neighborhoods, and I'd hate to be the reason that their life gets harder. Then there's Franklin's, which is good. It makes you drop your shit when a mallet crashes against your soft, brittle skin. Shocker. If survivors don't reclaim this item within 90 seconds, the entity swallows the item up and removes it from play. I already spoke about how this is really, really good on the pig, but I'll go through it again for being used on Bubsy. Personally, this new version is pretty much applicable on any killer, but the cannibal doesn't have any part of his power that directly complements it. You're just an angry dog on a leash, and offense is the name of the game, not map control, which is probably his main weakness overall. Finally, we have the perk knockout, the weakest of the bunch but still pliable in the right hands. Normally, when a survivor gets put in the dying state, every other survivor on the map can see exactly where they are and can run over to heal them if they choose to, but knockout will hide that presence from everyone not in a certain distance. The big issue is that 90% percent of the time you're just going to have to pick up the guy you spent five minutes doing the pallet dance with. Some killers fare better with slugs, but you can't pick this perk if you don't plan on using it. You can technically use this to regain some control over the objectives, because slugging someone the survivors can't see will buy you a certain amount of time. Just try to gauge when it's actually appropriate. That's about all I have to say about Bubba's perks and him in general. And like that, I'm going to end this video as gracelessly as I can, except I have about two announcements to go through. The first is that the next killer poll looks like it's going to land on the Demogorgon, so he'll be next week, and I've opened up another poll to decide who will be after that. Though, the last thing, I'll be doing something a little bit special this Sunday. My friend Puffa Whore Bear is doing a charity stream, and I'll be jumping on it temporarily. I know it's really for Bear, but he's a Halo YouTuber and therefore doesn't deserve my respect. All donations go towards the Trevor Project, a charity that directly benefits LGBT youths and works to prevent suicide. Those of you might know, but I stream on YouTube pretty regularly, so the downside is that you have to give Google your credit card and finagle past that irritating little screen. This is going to be a part of his 24-hour stream. Our section will be taking up the block between 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. EST. I know that is absolutely miserable, but to make up for it, I'll be adding certain donation goals, including drinking, shots, and a selfie if we reach that high enough. Even though it's not dead by daylight, I'd sure hope to see any of you guys coming by. That being said, I said I had two things to talk about, and now I have none, so clap, get me out of here!